Hello folks, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me once again. You are most welcome. Now, you're probably wondering what's going on here. Two little guys, figures. Uh, one is a German Wehrmacht soldier. The other one's an RAF officer, a Canadian one in fact. It's Charlie Fox from uh, the chap who shot up Field Marshal Erwin Rommel's staff car in Normandy. Let's have a little closer look at these two and I'll explain shortly exactly what this is all about. So, if you look very closely, you'll see that uh, obviously these are deadly enemies. <laughs> one on the left is definitely going to be strapping the one on the right. But there's also a slight, uh, a slight differential in their, their size. So it looks like the guy on the right's a German. Perhaps he's a little bit of a short guy or, or I don't know, perhaps he's at a different scale or something. Anyway, all will be revealed later. Today we've got something completely new. Very different indeed. We're just going to move these guys. We'll come back to these later. Uh, we have got something that you're going to find very interesting, I think. First of all, get rid of my boxes, which are all strewn about here. And there's a big box. Now, behind here, we've got something very interesting. Can you guess what it is? It's, uh, I'll give you a clue, it's an aircraft. It is none other than the new Border Models Messerschmitt BF 109 G6. And this is really a rather impressive looking kit from all accounts. Now, just arrived literally in the post a few minutes ago. So I thought we'd have a good look at this. Now this is, um, what's unusual about this kit, the most unusual thing is sort of hiding down at the bottom right here. It's, it's this bit. Oh, he says, and he can't even get it in the frame. Scale, 1 35th. 1 35th scale aircraft. Uh, yes, you heard me correctly, 135th, not 148th, not 132nd, but 135th. And this is where our two chaps come in. I was just talking, and we'll come back to the model in a second. Talking about these two guys, let's just see them in again so you can have another look at this. So, this is why these two little figures are pertinent, because the one on the left is a German. Uh, infantry. He is uh, in full Arden camo, by the way, and he is uh, in one thirty-fifth scale. Chap on the right is a Tamiar figure from the Tamiar Spitfire one thirty-two Spitfire, and you can clearly see there's a difference in size. If I actually put them absolutely level on, it might be easier for you to actually see that difference. Can you see? So the basically the uh, the one thirty-fifth. 35th military figure on the left it comes up, the top, he's got a helmet on but the, the top of his head comes up to about the bottom of the nose in real terms of the 132nd figure in the RAF uniform on the right so you can see there's quite a bit of difference isn't there you think of 132nd, 135th not being very significantly different in reality they are it's about I think in real terms it's about 9-10% or more um, thereabouts, but you can tell it looks about 10%. So, interesting that Border Models have done this thing that's completely new. They're going to basically offer to the market, they're doing two kits, they're doing this Messerschmitt uh, G6, uh, and then they're going to do a Stuka. Now the Stuka, you can well imagine that would really go well in the diorama with uh, these infantry figures and tanks in the background. But it's quite a brave thing to do, isn't it, in terms of bringing out a popular aircraft like the 109 in this scale. Anyway, without further ado, further ado, let's get cracking and have a proper look at this. Just literally hot off the postman's hands and we're going to have a proper look at this right now. So, first of all, I should point out this is the uh, limited edition, as you can see here. Limited edition version uh, and therefore it comes with mystery gifts which are a figure, resin figure, and then uh, some extras. So it usually has either PE seat belts, cannon shells that are in metal, or a metal propeller. It also has a clear glass see-through panel, and it's got uh, gun pods, and it's got this uh, rocket cannon uh, device underneath. Uh, Border Models is a is actually known as the Wuxu Sedlitz Trading Company Limited. Wow, that's going in. Um, it's their model number BF001, which is quite an interesting number, isn't it? 
And then on the other side we've got some schemes, call outs for the MIG range of colours, which is not necessarily that helpful. Uh, it reminds me, who else does that? Is it Edward and Trumpeter that do that? I think it says to, isn't it? In fact, I noticed that it looks a bit Edward Trumpeter like the way they've done the colour call outs, but it looks good, it looks very good. Uh, so we've got Hartman, we've got Barkhorn, and we've just got a general one there. Anyway, it's bulging, and you can see the box is kind of. It's almost like there's, there's so much goodies in here, the box lid can't quite stay on, it's trying to get out. So, I think, without any more chit chat, we should just get cracking and have a look at this. See what we've got, something completely new, new scale, quite a brave thing to do. Uh, the box itself is a bit, to be honest, it's a little bit flimsy, it's not really well glued, I would say. There and there, it seems to be coming apart. But anyway, oh, it's stapled even, oh gosh, it's stapled. Yeah, so it's not the best box design, but never mind. Let's have a look what is in the box, that's what interests us the most. So, oh, got some instructions, decals and some photo etch. This is the magic golden packet, has got your free gift in. Bonus, bonus gift if you like, a uh, resin figure hopefully, or, uh, and or something else. Uh, these are random, no idea knowing what you're going to get on this limited edition. And then we've got lots of sprues. So I think we'll, we'll just put that to one side for a second and we'll get cracking with the the main kit. I'm trying to get my light to come on a bit brighter and it isn't very bright so not to worry we'll just move that over there. Let's have a look. Right I think we'll start at resealable bag that's a good start so let's have a look at these decals. Uh, lost that way. yeah. Okay, okay, so they've got they've got a staple in the actual uh, one end of the uh, tissue, the covering tissue, which is always a good idea. It's nice to have it retained instead of having it just float off and then you get marked decals. So, pull that off gently. And we have got, okay, so there are three variants they're offering. Uh, you've got a swastika uh, that's, that's, you make it up to be a swastika so that people, you know, don't get offended or whatever. Um, but anyway, that's a good way of doing it. So you've got a little cross that goes in the middle to make up your swastikas. You've got some nice crosses. Decals look nice, got to say. Don't know who makes them or what they function like. But they are a, kind of a satin finish. Uh, got some slight marking on my cross here. I don't know if you can see that, if it shows in the light. Some strange marks on this one especially. See that? Hmm, not very good. Um, perhaps it's just where there's been touch of the tissue. I hope that that will disappear when it's uh, in use. But some nice clear printing. There's actually a second load of swastikas there for some reason. I'm not sure why I've done that many. But it looks good. A uh, nice little fishing boat here. What does it say? C... Seaman? Seaman. Okay. A little boat. Very interesting. Okay, that looks nice. Then we've got a little bit of uh, photo X. There's not much on it, but i say. Oh, it's nice and thin though, it's very very thin, look at this. That's quite nice, isn't it? Uh, I think that might be for the supercharger, I'm not sure what the rest are, if I'm completely honest with you. All will become clear later. So we'll pop that back in there. Plus our decals, decals. Right. I never, I never say it right the first time, it's just old habits die hard. Right, so that's that. Then we have got the instructions. Now let's have a look in. Well, looks quite nicely printed and uh, says there's a full interior full interior of engine, PE parts are included, transparent engine cover, transparent gun bay with full interior of the gun and two camouflage schemes. Okay, I mean I haven't done a big number on the 109's history other than to say of course this is probably the most prolific fighter of World War II and this is the most prolific version of that fighter, the G6. Uh, and it saw service from about, I think, late 42, right towards the end of the war, the G6, I think. Let's start off with a sprue tree map, which is quite well done, I have to say, nice and clear. Uh, doesn't seem to indicate on this whether you're going to use them all or not, but... And you start straight off with your engine, so you've got the Daimler Benz engine going in here. Gonna build up the two sides of the, uh, the main block, cylinder head, sump, and of course this is an inverted engine, it uh, has the sump at the top, uh, which is why it's got um, 
it has oil pumps, it's a, I think it's a dry sump type engine. I think I'm rightly saying. Uh, so it's highly pressurised the oil, otherwise it wouldn't work, would it? You'd have it flooding the cylinder head. Um, so the oil recirculates via these pumps and um, is sprayed into all the areas it needs to go to. Then you have got uh, your cannon here. This is the cannon that's going to go through the engine itself, through the centre, and obviously out through the spinner. You've got oil tanks, you've got all your uh, injection system going in here. It looks quite detailed. You've got a supercharger on the side. Um, then you've got your cooling system. And then you... It's not a lot... I have to say, this is another... I'm, I'm going to have a moan and be wary. Here it comes. Yet again, uh, with one of these Far Eastern uh, manufacturers, there's no words... There's no words, there's no description. There's no, you know, like Tamiya do saying, this is the oil pump, this is the supercharger, these are the cannons. No, there's nothing, nothing at all. Not a word is spoken, it's just numbers. Because they don't want to have to translate, that's the reason, of course. Anyway, I shall um, rant over. I've said my piece, but uh, it's not good enough, you know. I think visually this looks quite good, but why can't they just add a little bit of instruction? Anyway, then you're building up your seat, you start with the bottom of the seat, and you've got your stick, and then you've got your pedals going in here, you've got your instrumentation, gun sight, trim wheel, this is the back of the cannon box where the, the shells are collected, which is right between the pilot's legs of course in a 109, <laughs> not ideal. Um, then you've got your, you're building all this together, um, it doesn't look overly detailed, I don't see any sign of any uh, seat belts. There's no mention of seat belts. So, okay, hang on a minute. Is that right? Am I missing something here? So, seat belts, there's an option. It might be in this box or may well not be. So, if, if there's no seat belts included, that's a bit odd, isn't it? Why didn't they do a decal version of it? That's what they should have done a decal version of the seat belts. And then some proper PE ones as an option of upgrade if you get it in the free box. But it looks like they haven't done any, which is kind of weird, isn't it? Anyway. Back to the instructions. They're going to lose a point for that, I think, if that's true. Now then, here we have got the uh, cannons, the top cannons are going on. And again, there's no description about the cannons. That, you know, if you're not very um, well averse with the aircraft, it doesn't give you any info whatsoever, uh, which is kind of a shame. I think they're missing a trick there. Um, you've got your engine braces going in here. Um, then you have got your tailwheel and the tail itself, which looks like it's got some control rods. I wonder if that's PE. Here. That looks, uh, that looks quite good, doesn't it, actually? Then over here we've got the interior on the cockpit wall where you put in your radio and your um, you've got your oxygen pipe, various trim levers, throttle levers, the gear levers, and then it shows you quite nicely how they should look when they're actually inserted on the wall of the cockpit side. Then we've got the cooling system that goes on the front of the engine here. Uh, like the cooling jacket in effect. And then you bring in the, um, obviously the cockpit is now brought together with the, uh, the engine. And you bring it all together with your fuselage and your tail goes in, plus your tail wheel. And then you've got your Beulah's uh, cowlings that go over the cannon. Uh, the Beulah's are the bulges basically here. Um, and of course we had this in the, um, the Tamiya 148 scale kit, which I think is one of the greatest kits ever. I'm not saying it's the greatest, but it's right up there. Um, beautiful little model that is, but once got all the magnets where on the Tamiya kit all this is interchangeable. And you can remove all the panels and have them open. And you have closed panels included as well that you can fit as an option, which is brilliant. Uh, they don't seem to have done that here, but I think they might be offering you clear, clear panels. Uh, for whatever reason, but anyway. Uh, and you've got the uh, the open uh, access panels for the engine. That looks quite good. So you've got a closed door open, so fair enough. Well, then we are building up our wheels and tyres and the gear legs, uh, the gear leg covers. And it looks like it might have some metal parts there. I'm not sure, I'm not sure yet, but that looks quite nice the way they've done it. It's quite like a two-stage system, the outer and the inner of the OVO leg. 
that looks all right. Then you've got your flaps going on, attaching to the top of the wing, and then you're building up your your inner wing and uh, gear wells. Uh, also the radiators, the radiator. Sorry, it's the radiator flap that I'm looking at, isn't it? It's the other side of the radiator flap. It's not the flaps. The radiator flaps. Uh, set the select the weapons to be assembled and drill accordingly. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I don't want to be too critical of these guys because I know they're new at it. But this kind of instruction, that's a bit, that's a bit nasty. I've got to be honest. This is not good enough, folks. That we need a bit more than that. It's not even well printed, really, is it? Not too impressed there. However, um, then you're building up your flaps. If you've got your radiator uh, grills there, and then you've got the uh, radiator grills here, and then your flaps for the wings here. Uh, keeps on saying Hartman's does not have a machine gun. It means Hartman's doesn't have wing uh, wing gondolas, which is what these are gondola pods for the machine guns. Okay, fair enough. Um, then you bring the two top and wing, top and bottom of the wing together, and then you've got this option of the rocket launcher. Again, it doesn't tell you what it is, or there's no description. No data rest at all, but anyway, looks quite nice. If the plastic is as good as it looks here, it'll be quite quite impressive. And you've got the liners that go on the inside. They're like a fabric of a liner that goes around the inside of the uh, the gear bay. They're going in there. Two rocket launchers going in under your wings, like so, or the gondolas, gun cannon gondolas. 20 meter, 20 millimeter or 30 millimeter, I can never remember. Uh, and then you've got your um, final sort of fitting of your radiators uh, on the wing, and then you've got your chin radiator under the engine and the under cowl as well. Plus, you're making up your tail planes here, and then we've got our fuel tank, additional fuel tank underneath goes on under and you pop in your now completed undercarriage. Then you're building up your spinner and your props. Then it's time to move on to the, uh, the top of the, uh, the canopy itself and the windscreen, radio aerial. Your, you've got your bulletproof uh, shield behind the driver here. Armour plating I should say. And then you've got You've got an option, you've got a different style of canopy for a, another variant. Uh, is that a G6? I didn't think that was. I didn't, I didn't think the G6 had that type of canopy with the clear side, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm sure the experts among you will comment. And that's it. And then basically we've got these rather nice, actually, colour call-outs. Um, suggesting ammo again, a bit like the likes of Trumpeter and others do. Uh, I don't know what it is with the Far Eastern manufacturers, they all seem to be very wedded to ammo and uh, it would be nice if they gave us those colour call-outs in Tamiya uh, and you know Hataka and people like that so yeah that could be improved but the visual, visuals are very good and so that's that's Barkhorn's aircraft then we think we've got Hartman's aircraft here a uh, different scheme with a bit more of a traditional 109 uh, like a leopard skin type style camo on the side. Then we've got the one that's not, it doesn't name the fighter race, but this is a, I think it's an Eastern Front one again, which looks very nice. And then finally, finally, you've got some other options. Now, this is a bit weird because I think they're offering you options that there are no decals for. I don't think you can have it's Finland, the first one, and the second one's. Germany but again I don't think either of those have got decals that are included in the kit I'm not sure what to put them in for really uh, the suggestions but you need to go and buy aftermarket don't know why they would do that that doesn't really strike me as being sensible again a bit confusing it doesn't say or explain there's no explanation of what they're thinking is here it just goes on Gunther Rahl Karl Ramelli Ramelli Remelt Remelt it's obviously some famous aces for the, the 109 and then you've got the one with the rockets underneath lots of schemes I like that but but hey you know um, 
Don't be negative because it, it looks like a good kit so far. Fingers crossed. But the instructions are woeful. You know, it, it's not the it's not the artwork. It's the actual communication of the data, uh, which is crap, quite frankly. And it's like so many others that I've complained about recently. Come on, get your act together. That's not good enough. Anyway, we can draw that. Let's get the plastic out and have a proper look. Now this lot, unfortunately, is not in sealed, uh, resealable bags. So I'm going to have to open them. But it's such an important model. This I think that has to be done. Whether I'll be able to unlock myself in the end, I don't. Let's have a look. See, shall we? Let's start with the this is a special surprise. It's like a, something out of a cracker, isn't it? You're not sure what you're going to get. So shall we open that with some scissors? Let's see what we've got. Oh no, we don't need to. Actually, it's got the scissors. Here we go. Okay. Oh, I've opened it, so I'm committed. Oh, we've got the high altitude pilot, which is quite cool. That's a, that's quite a nice one. There we go. High altitude pilot with his oxygen gear on. Let's have a look. Okay, so there he is. What else have we got? Uh, we've got the second gift, which is. Oh no, I'm pleased with that actually. I'm pleased with this. This is the metal uh, rockets that go under the in the rocket pods under the wing, and they look really good. Let's have a, let's have a proper look at them. Let's have a look see at these. Not sure. They're packed them terribly well, put the staples in. Those are nice. Look at this. Can I get that in for you? Do you see that? That's really nice. That's gorgeous, isn't it? Turned metal. Now the other option was the metal, either the PE seat belts or the metal propeller. Um, but the metal propeller didn't look that special, to be honest. But they're nice. They're really, really good. That's that's a gorgeous. It's like a shell, isn't it? It looks almost like an 88 millimeter shell. That's really good. Two of those, and we also get we get some ah we get some additional decals decals. To go with it, so 17. Let's just go back and see which that was. I think this is what they're trying to say without saying it. This is why I was getting cross. Okay, so it's the last one. So, in other words, zooming out again a bit. So, the final option, the one that's got rocket, that's 17. That's the markings for this. So, you've got the rockets and you've got the markings to go with it. So, presumably, then, this is what they're obviously trying to mean, even though they haven't said it. Each of these is another option. And they probably include another little decal, decal, with that, depending on which option they give you in terms of a freebie. So, okay, okay, I'm going to let them off, even though their communication was utterly abysmal. They might be clawing back some points here. <laughs> well, that's quite good, actually. Quite like that. Right, now this is the figure. I think we need to, um, to get the stake by it, really. So it's a resin figure. That staple is awful. I don't like staples. I don't think they should be anywhere near plastic kits because they just scratch things. Anyway, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Yes, it's a very nice little figure. Let me just put that to the parts there. Let's have a look at this guy. Now that that looks quite special. That is really nice. It's got seat belts on him. But, that, but I haven't got any seat belts in this kit, so my, my grumble about the lack of seat belts remains, I'm afraid, because I haven't been given them as an extra. Uh, although I'm not complaining about the extras I have got, because they look super. Look at that, you've got the parachute detail. Look. And then we've got his, his head here, which looks like something from Alien, does it not? Oops. There we go. There's his head. That's really cool. Yeah, that's that's really nice. Like that. And then we just got his arms. <laughs> A pair of arms. Just 
to get those to focus. There we go. A couple of arms. Right, well that's quite impressive actually, but what's not impressive is the lack of seat belts in the kit. So there's no seat belts of any kind, uh, unless the PE is supposed to be bent into seat belts, but I don't see how that would work. So you're going to have to go after market. So that's quite a little bit annoying, if we're brutally honest. However, not to be too negative, because I quite like those two items that I did get. I think I prefer that to... I think I prefer that to the metal propeller. Put that back in there. Sorry, let me bring you out. You can see what's going on. There we are. Yeah, so quite like the extras they've given us, but to have seat belts as an optional extra kind of thing is a bit daft. That is just uh, lunacy, actually. Anyway, let's not do it. Let's move on and get cracking into the plastic and see what we've got. Starting with this one. Now it's a completely new manufacturer of this scale and this market, so let's try and give them a let's try and give them a chance. Wow. Yeah, I'm noticing straight away that uh, Certainly compared to my, I've got the Matchbox BF109E in 30 second scale. You can tell it's smaller than that straight away. Have a look at this. There we go. It's not that big. The detail is frankly stunning. Um, look at it here. Look at this. That's amazing. That really is good. Um, and the uh, the riveting is just fantastic. Wow, this is better than I'd hoped. Especially at the front, look at that. So incredible. Wow. And you've got your fuel tank here radiators and then you've got your flaps at this end flaps 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 spinner and again look at the detail on the spinner got all the rivets really really nice that's your bum uh, holding mechanism underneath um, other side I've got to say the plastic's nice and uh, quite Quite a firm, ah, jinky plastic. It's not, it's not soft. It's not plasticine like. Feels sort of like tamiarish. Again, look at the, look at the panels and the panel lines and the little hatches. Ooh, that's pretty impressive stuff, I'd say. Yeah, that is exceeding my expectations. If I'm perfectly honest. That is really, really nice, and there's no flash on anything I can see that you would uh, notice. So that's one. Let's pop that back in there. Second one. There we go. Two sprues at the same, but uh, let's just concentrate on one. So, um, I, yeah, I, I did see um, uh, somebody, I think it was Andy's Hobby Headquarters in America, I think he reviewed this a while back, and he, um, I think he did it for a couple of months, <laughs> obviously closer to China, so they get it first, but he was saying how nice the, uh, the props are, and I must agree with him, look at that. Uh, the, the metal versions didn't look any better, if not, if not worse, actually. That's nice, that's really nice. Uh, you've got the wheels there, fine detail there with the, uh, all the bolts on the wheels. There's the non-metallic cannon shell, rocket, sorry, rocket. Here's the rocket tubes that have clearly been slide moulded, because you can clearly see that they are hollow. Look at that. Those are impressive, yeah? Those are impressive. Then you've got your wheels. And it's um, weight on wheels, it would seem. 
You've actually got you've actually got them both. You've got weight on wheels and not weight on wheels, that's a bit odd. You've got weight on wheels two that seem to have weight on wheels. Oh okay, you have. You've got the option of weight on wheels or no weight on wheels. Now you have to bear in mind on the 109 it has displayed undercarriage and depending on uh, inflation pressures, it didn't always show much weight on wheel pressure, which is why it's quite subtle. The, one, the two on the right are weight on wheels, the two on the left are not. So you've got the option there, obviously. Um, and then you've got your Canon here. Sorry, here. Canon. That's nice, isn't it? And there's no flash at all. It's really nicely moulded. I like that. It's looking very good, actually. I wonder if this is a great success, whether other manufacturers might follow suit. Because obviously what Border are trying to do is sort of start a new generation, so to speak, a new epoch. And get, perhaps get their competitors to come into the market. So that we have modellers of armour crossing over with uh, modellers who are doing aircraft. That's the idea, isn't it? Really? And what have we here? We've got we've got tail planes. Uh, sorry, that's the elevator. We've got the, the, mm, yeah. Sorry, it's the two halves of the elevators. I beg your pardon. Elevators there and there, and then you've got your tail planes there and there. And here we've got the cowling underneath the uh, engine and your cooling jacket. And you've got your little radiators there in the middle. Under the wing radiators that'll be. They look really nice. Again, look at the, you know, if we're getting close, look at the, uh, look at the riveting detail here. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? This one we've got your rudder, rudder here, and the uh, gear covers, again lots and lots of riveting, fine detail, got the, another cannon there, this is the top cannons I think this time, and you've got your the boss for the spinner, for the propeller I should say, boss. You've got your tail wheel and you've got your part your oleo legs there. And various small parts. Uh, I think one of them is the, uh, the cradle for the rockets. For the wing, or some support brackets I should say. Cradle or support bracket. That's really nice. Do you know what? It's remarkably good, I've got to say. Remarkably good. Um, we here? Some clear parts. Clear parts. Non clear parts, it would seem. Let's have a look here. Wow. Right, so what we've got here is a complete duplication. Clear version and non-clear version. So you've got, okay, so let's look at the, the grey plastic first. Now that's odd, isn't it? How strange, they've, they've got a protector bar here, so you, and yet they haven't got it. So the protector bar is over the clear parts for the clear cowl. But there's no protector bar here to protect the canopy, which is bizarre, that's the thing you need to protect the most by far, and they've not protected it, so I find that a little bit strange. Anyway, let's just uh, look at the grey first, because that'll give us a bit more, easy to photograph in more detail. So it's your, your Bueller, uh, it, got your Bueller's here, your engine cover, um, the back of the Bueller's is on there, obviously. But that is just stunning moulding, I mean, that's beautiful. Absolutely outstanding. Uh, and then you've got your gondolas, I think you've got them for the cannons down here. 
And then you've got this uh, strangely <laughs> replicated in grey plastic, your canopy. And I think the idea is that you use that as a mask, which is quite a good plan, I suppose, really, to be honest. I don't have a problem with that. Um, oops, trying to scratch it, I think. So you'll, you'll place these over the open cockpit and you'll spray away and you'll keep your nice clear parts, which we come to now, your real canopy is here. It's your mask, obviously. Well, that's another thing they haven't got. They haven't got any masks, have they? Something else they've overlooked. So there's no masks and there's no seat belts. That is very curious. Anyway, um, you've got windscreens, you've got two versions of the main top canopy there. Um, I do quite like the later version, this one. That's the earlier version. It's more of a greenhouse effect. This is the one that's got the clear side. That's quite nice, isn't it? Yes, I, I do like that. Yeah, and you've got your various windscreens on the back screen. Um, two different variants of windscreen, a couple of uh, small windows, lights, that's it. Uh, and of course these clear engine covers if you so desire to make it clear. Not sure why you would do that really, but some, you know, for display purposes, if you're going to put it in a show or a museum or something, then that might, that might work for you. That's very interesting. I would have liked to see more protection for the actual proper glass, I really would, but the concept is good, I don't understand why they've got a protection bar where they don't need one, it's quite weird. <laughs> then we have got the wings, this is a big old sprue, that's what we got here. Right. Oh goodness me, this is stunning. Look at this. Blow me down. This is one of the nicest ever pieces of injection moulding I think I've seen. It gets right up there. Look at that. I mean that's that's better than Tamiar, isn't it? It's sharper. It's got such nicely ingrained details. Very, very uh it's got a nice sort of granular surface to it as well. It's sort of very it makes it look bigger than you know just a piece of plastic scale model. It makes it look real, it brings it alive somehow. Look at the detail, look at the detail on the uh, the riveting around the radiator area there. Look at that. This is stunning. That's amazing. Then we've got the top wing here. Mm-hmm. A lot of rivets, uh, panel lines. I'm not sure if I'm going to be OTT with it uh, on the top, especially. I don't know. I'm trying to remember on the uh, the smaller Tamiya 48 scale kit. Is that? Is it quite as defined as that? I'm not sure. Don't, I don't look like, sound like I'm looking for trouble, but uh, it's it's certainly striking. Very very striking. And then you've got your various ailerons and your flaps here. For the wings and again lovely lovely and beautiful you know this is um as a, i think as a fabric doesn't it uh on the ailerons fabric over alloy so you've got ribs um and then you've got an alternate version of the rudder so there's obviously two variants in here that's amazing that's so nice there's no ejector pins apart from in the inside where that's fine, you know. It's a really well designed mould, I'm saying that. Um, now when you look at something like this, just going back to my earlier comments and earlier videos, look at the comments I made about the bear. Now I know it was much older, it turned out that they were fibbing, saying it was 2018 and it's actually 2003. But come on, look at the finish on this. Yeah, Even the other trumpeter and the, uh, what was the other one? Even the Edouard didn't have that kind of consistently beautiful finish on its mould. That is stunning. Really gorgeous. 10 out of 10, no question on that screw. That's one of the nicest screws I've ever seen. Though. And then just one, one more to go. So, this is all those other little parts. Fine stuff. Engine parts, injection system, superchargers, etc. Did I cut that or did I not? I don't think I did. There we go. Now then. 
Ooh, yes, 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 look at this. Instrument panel. Armour plating. This is your injection system. Um, right, actually, sorry, it's the ignition leads, so not the injection system, the ignition leads. Wow, they've done that well in plastic, haven't they? Now, that's often done in PE by other manufacturers, but they've, they've moulded it so finely. I mean, the moulding, uh, they seem almost unrestricted by, by size, you know, it's so fine. Here's your supercharger. This is the back of your Canon uh, ammo collection box, spent shells. This is the side, uh, instruments on the side of the cockpit. And then we've got down here, we've got the engine main block. And then the cylinder head. And then we've got the floor, the cockpit and your engine braces and your fuel, this is the fuel system I think isn't it? Did we say that was fuel system or do we say it's fuel injection or, or cooling? I can't remember. I think it's fuel. It's the fuel rail I think. And you've got trim wheels here and you've got all manner of small parts. Look at these. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> There's just tons of them. Look. I mean the uh, the quality of the moulding is as good as anybody else, as good as anybody else at all, you know. I find it absolutely mind blowing actually, it's just that that nice. And um, you've got the uh, the front of the engine here where the uh, the main drive shaft comes out to the spinner and prop. Look at that. Wow. That is stellar. Stella, Stella. So, is that the last, I think that's the last screw, folks. I am absolutely. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm, I missed off the cylinder heads. Where are they? Do, do, do. Cylinder heads, there they are. There they are, there they are. Um, I, am, uh, I am most impressed. Most impressed. Um, I think they are suffering from the typical Chinese disease. Uh, it's not just China, Taiwan as well, and one or two other places. Um, in that, you know, they're, they're producing a beautiful kit. Uh, slightly strange, isn't it? It's, it's it's a nice size actually. It's not too big. I quite like this one thirty kit. I quite like to see more coming out in that scale. I think the steel probably is brilliant. That really will be a treat. Um, it's beautiful, really, really beautiful. Um, only let down by by two things: silly instructions um, and lack of any seat belts. I don't understand that. Uh, I don't. I, I don't know what they're thinking of. That you now have to go and have to buy aftermarket, unless you can make those into seat. They're not seat belts on the photo. Which it's not. It's something else. Something else. So, what do we think? I think? I think the box isn't great. It's not strong enough for anything. It's very weird. Uh, and the instructions are poor in their communication, and there is no seatbelt. So the, the, there you have it. Apart from that, I think it's absolutely stunning. I think it's one of the nicest kits I've ever seen. Uh, it's right up there with you know the likes of Tamiya Great Wall Hobby. And even uh, Zokimura, frankly, um, this wasn't cheap. It was about I think they were retailing for about sixty-six pounds or thereabouts. Um, so that was that's about hundred dollars in the states, slightly more, um, 80, 75, 80 euros, something like that. I think this um, question mark thing, limited edition thing, is a bit of a gimmick. Um, although I can't complain because I didn't want the metal props anyway. I didn't think they were that great. I think they got the best one and a nice pilot. So, what's the verdict? What do you think? I think it's... I'm going to give it 9.5 out of 10. It would get 10 if it had sensible instructions with a bit more explanation, if it had the seat belts. I mean, the, all right, the box is a bit picky, I know, it's just a little bit annoying, it's a bit flimsy. Um, but what is the, the injection moulding? It's it's up there with, I say, I mean, we had the Hong Kong uh, Lancaster, that was beautiful. Uh, it's up there with that. 
and you know with these other recent kits that have come in from the Far East that are really stellar quite frankly where they are failing is their communication they're, they're so frightened of translating anything wrong what these companies need is somebody to do the English part of the instructions the artwork is beautiful they're just not communicating any words or writing that is credible and uh, even the colour call outs are very confusing what they're trying to communicate it wasn't clear a lot of people are going to get this and find it a bit baffling um, however I'm not going to knock it I think it's one of the most stunning especially for a new manufacturer the last time we saw a new manufacturer that was this good it was of course gas patch with that ME 163B Comet which was also a beautiful beautiful kit this is very similar on the obviously it's a 109 um, and it's at a bigger scale 135th whether 135th is going to catch on I don't know as I said you know we've got this slight difference in height um, you know you can see it there I'll show you one more time uh, when you get the two together it becomes yeah it's slightly more than you think uh, it, it's surprising frankly so put them exactly on the level there you go you can see exactly what the difference is in size so it's about it's about 10 percent 15 percent I think somebody worked it out so it was 17 I can't remember but there we are so in summary I think that uh, if you spare £65 you should buy this um, did we need another 109G6 probably not um, but the execution of that that plastic is beautiful beautiful one of the nicest kits I've seen in a long time if not ever I say it's up there with the gas patch and the, the Hong Kong model and, and the Tamiya stuff very impressed uh, I take my hat off to board a model please just focus more on your communication instructions and you will have a winning package if the Stuka is like this wow that's going to be absolutely amazing I can't wait to be honest so round of applause 9.5 you would have got 10 if you got some sense of instructions and some seat belts what's the pilot supposed to do he's going to get thrown around all over the place <laughs> anyway hope you'll give me 9.5 out of 10 at least with a thumbs up uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so because um, then you'll get to see lots more uh, similar content to this. If you are a subscriber, uh, please remember to ding the notification bell and you'll get early updates when I upload a new vid. Uh, and that's it for now, folks. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you all stay well and stay safe. Uh, and in the meantime, until we have another video with another review coming along, thanks a lot and bye for now.